So, I finally got a 3D printer. Finally. I've been wanting one for years. This is the Chidi Q1 Pro, and I'm super excited to unbox this, go through the specs, and learn this 3D printer together. This is gonna be a journey that we're gonna have to share because I don't know a single thing about 3D printing. I know a little bit about guitar building, but what we're gonna do is take advantage of this 3D printer as a new tool in the shop that we can use and exploit for all our processes and workflows. What does that mean? I don't know yet. Will we be building tools? Will we be prototyping guitar parts? Unknown, but we're gonna do this together. So let's go ahead and unbox this, take a quick look and run through the specs. Let's do it. Nice. Well, here's the official website for Chidi. You wanna take a look at some of these 3D printers. All right. We have the quick start guide, which we're gonna definitely need because I don't know what I'm doing. Looks like we have the power cable tools that we're gonna require to um, assemble this. I assume this is to help pry 3D print off the bed. They sent over a sample of some PLA filament. All right, so the instructions here are grasp the middle of the bag and take out the machine. The weight is about 17 kilograms. So I'm just gonna lift this up and we're gonna put it on this table. What I love about the Chidi Q1 Pro is that it walks you through the process using the touch screen. So it tells you to remove the ties and the screws that are holding down the bed for shipping. It's got full auto calibration. So it actually goes through the bed leveling for you. All you're doing is hitting next on the touch screen. This is amazing. All the complexities are taken out and they're just provided for you in this really simple walkthrough. And I have to admit that it is a very affordable printer and it's such a like compact footprint. So you could put it in your shop and it'll fit almost anywhere. We have this active chamber heating, which is gonna allow for less warping and a better bonding to the bed. The Chidi is also able to essentially allow you to use a variety of filaments, such as PHHTCF, PET, P12, ABS, etc. We also have this idea of dual sensor auto bed leveling, which I don't really know what it means, but I do know with the push of a button, I can get my bed leveling done automatically. I assume most printers have this same runout detection. So essentially when you're about to run out of filament, the machine pauses, it warns you on the touch screen and it allows you to replace the filament and then resume the actual print. The Chidi also comes with a 1080p camera for monitoring and making time-lapse videos. And I thought this was really cool. I really like the time-lapse videos, but more importantly, I can open up the Chidi mobile app and anywhere on my Wi-Fi, I can actually remotely monitor the actual print and see where it is in its progress. I recommend going to the Chidi Tech website if you want to look at the specs. I won't go over them in detail, but they're all there. So I've been 3D printing now for about two weeks. And I came into this with a lot of fear and zero confidence. I have to tell you that there is no learning curve and there is no ramp up. I just basically started printing with really no knowledge whatsoever. And I have to attribute that to the Kitty Tech Q1 Pro and the Kitty Slicer as well. So I actually had an idea for this video and that was I was going to print every guitar related thing that I could find on the internet. And I started off with the humble pick. I just downloaded them off the internet. I thought it was a cute little design. And I basically put it on the printer and hit play. And it came out really cool. In fact, I actually did another one, trying out some of the features in the Kitty Slicer to make it just a little bit thicker. And so this one's three mil thick, a nice, real chubby pick. So it's quite a gorgeous pick design. It's got these little hexagon honeycombs on there. And obviously I'm printing this portion down on the bed because the finish 
it's touching the bed actually comes out really cool. So the pick was such an easy way to jump into this, especially for someone who's like a guitar builder who doesn't know anything about 3D printing. The humble pick is the way to go. So the second thing that I printed was essentially a Telecaster control panel. And the Telecaster control panel came out perfectly. So again, my idea for this video is to like print every guitar related thing on the internet that I can find. So I went to all those like 3D printing repositories and found all the things I was looking for. And this came out gorgeous. It even did the countersunk holes for the screws. And because this is the portion that was laying on the bed, it's got that really nice finish. This would be the underneath portion here. So I learned that you can like adjust the top fill and you can determine what the sort of design is for the top fill. And the design is the wrong word, obviously I'm not using the right word, but however the top is filled, you can actually kind of sort of choose in the slicer what to use. And so I chose this particular one. I thought it looked kind of nice. And again, super easy. All he did was like send it wirelessly after slicing it to the printer and hitting play. And that was it. So the third thing that I wanted to actually print was something with a little height because the picks and the Telecaster control cover were quite thin. So I decided to print a guitar knob. It's just a guitar knob that I downloaded off the internet. And you know, it's the type of guitar knob that has the knurling, it's typically made out of metal. And the printer did a pretty decent job with the knurling, although it's not as pronounced as it could be. And then obviously for the top, I did, again, that's kind of same top infill, which is a nice little cute little design. Easy peasy. And these are things that are already like plastic, right? A knob, typically in a guitar like a Strat, is made out of plastic, so. No harm there, right? So I thought, well, what's the next thing I want to do? What are some other plastic bits that are on a guitar that would be okay to print? Pickup rings. And pickup rings are what you'd find essentially on like a humbucker. And this came out really well. So again, it did the countersinking for the screw holes. And then there's the bottom right there. Quite lovely finish because that's what's touching the bed. And this is so cool because recently when I was working on my jacks and I had to buy two thin pickup rings to replace the kind of clunky ones that were on there. And now I don't have to buy them anymore. I can just print them if I wanted to. And the really cool thing about like the slicer and the KD Q1 Pro is that it tells you how much filament you're using and it breaks down the cost analysis too. So it tells you how much you paid for the item. And I think this was like 13 cents, which is kind of ridiculous, <laughs> right? So then I thought about tools, right? So like, let's try to download some tools. There are so many tools out there. And, you know, I did this little radius gauge. So these are the gauges you typically find made out of like thin sheet metal and they come in, in a variety of different radiuses ranging from like 7.25 all the way to like 20. Um, this one is a 12 inch radius gauge and it's really quite lovely. And I was always worried that, you know, you wouldn't have a, a nice surface finish on the radius part, but it's so smooth. It's very, very smooth. And it's very sturdy too. So, you know, you think that since it's plastic, you'd be able to bend it or something, but it's really, it's quite a sturdy tool. And really its only purpose is to essentially just determine the radius of your fretboard. And it's not really doing a lot more than that. So the next thing that I decided to print was also something that's already plastic on a guitar, right? And what I wanted to do was a pickup cover. Thank you. 
So these are your standard like Strat style single coil pickup covers that you'd find. Now, clearly I'm using a matte black filament and I'm getting sort of that matte black look that's almost sort of like a dark gray. And that's the type of kind of color that's, that I like. I like this color that not only is not reflecting light, but doesn't have that glossiness that most filaments do. Because I think it's the glossiness that really kind of gives it away that it's like plastic. But these matte finishes are actually really, really nice. And quite sturdy too. So I was really happy with this and I did actually print this, you know, face down. So the nice finish uh, the left from the bed is up on top here. And I couldn't be happier. I think this worked out really well. And again, if you break down the cost analysis, which I don't have for all of these, but like it's super cheap. It's like cents. And then I moved on to this, which is an over the string tool. Same thing, it's a fretboard radius gauge, but this is meant to be placed basically when you have strings on the fretboard and you have all these notches so that they can fit over the fretboard. Now you can see I have the really nice surface finish on the bed, and then the top is has all the text on it. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I downloaded all these things for free. Like they're just there for free. So I didn't pay for any of these models, I just downloaded them and I printed them. And you get the whole set of these for free. This for free, the knob, the picks, the Telecaster control plate, the humbucker pickup ring, and the pickup cover. I didn't pay for those. They're free to download and you can just print them yourself. But now I started thinking, okay, so we have some tools, we have some cool little things and bits and bobs for the guitar. What about some like utilitarian things? So these are the inserts or when you have a traditional humbucker that is mounted on a pickup ring that you want to direct mount. So when you take off the humbucker pickup ring, you're left with a very large route for the humbucker. You have these wings inside the route. Well, these guys right here, these guys go in the wings and you set them in with wood screws. And those wood screws will hold these into place. And then you can use your normal humbucker screw with the spring to basically mount this in the route without the pickup ring. And I thought this was really ingenious. There's a slot in each one for the nut, right? So you have your nut that you slide in there, your normal screws that came with your humbucker go in there with the springs. So you have basically a direct mount with the original spring and screw, and these take care of adhering this to actual wood with wood screws. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was a really great, brilliant design. This video is all about the ease of use and how easy it is to jumpstart your 3D printing journey. I thought it was going to be a rough journey. I thought this was going to be like full of pitfalls and I thought I was going to be stumbling over and stressing out over learning how to 3D print, but I didn't have to do any of that. It was so easy. So. Let's walk through the software, take a little peek into like what I was doing, what settings I changed, and um, we'll go from there. Maybe we'll actually print something else. So I'm in here in the Cheaty Slicer app, and what I'm gonna do is download an actual model, import it onto the plotter, and then send it to the printer to just show you how easy it is. So right now I've launched the application. I'm already using the profile for the printer, so I don't have to really make any adjustments. I'm gonna click the open or add button here. So it's this bobbin. You can see it's just your standard kind of single coil bobbin. It's in two pieces so that you can print easier this way. And here what I want to do under the perimeter, I'm going to go up to three. So as far as the infill is concerned, it's set up at 15% automatically. And just for this demonstration, I'll put it up to 20% just for this demonstration. So those are the only two adjustments I'm making. I'll go back to my platter and I'm going to re-slice it. It looks really good. I'm happy with it. Nothing's weird. I probably didn't even have to do those adjustments. All right, so now that I've sliced it, I'm gonna hit one button here, which is send to printer in the lower right corner. 
I give it a name. In this case, it's called Pick Up Bobbin, and then I'm just going to click on Upload. I get the message in a second later that it's completed. That's it. I can actually shut down this application on my computer. I no longer need it open because all the rest of this is going to be on the printer itself. So let's go over there. All right, so I'm on the actual printer itself. I'm going to click the folder icon. This is going to go through all the internal 3D models that I have on here that I've sent to the printer. The one I just sent is at the very, very end. So there's the pickup bobbin. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap that. And then this is it. The next and last thing I'm going to do is click this button right here. So it's going to ask me to open up the actual door. So I'm going to do that. And then it's going to go through its bed leveling process and it's going to start printing. That's it. Nothing to it. So I'm here inside the actual KD Slicer app and I can see sort of like a comprehensive view of all these metric points that the printer actually is going through. So everything from the temperature of the chamber to the temperature of the bed and the extruder itself. I can even see the built-in camera in here. Uh, a lot of other things that are happening, which I don't really understand, but it's super cool to have all this information if I need it. So I had this set up already to make time-lapse videos. So every single time it prints, it'll make a time-lapse video and I can actually pull that in and download it if I want to. So that's it. I sent the model from GD Slicer to the printer. I hit play and now I get to walk away. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.